and we'll open up with Mike Rodak. Hey, Nate, just since this uh, practice has started here, the, you know, the preseason has started, how much do you think you've learned about your team and just where do you think expectations have fallen um, compared to what you've actually seen on the court these past couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, I've learned quite a bit, to be honest with you. I think with all the new guys we've got, we needed to learn a lot. You know, we're trying to tell our guys we got to figure out various lineups, like who, who can close a game. You know, if we got to have a switching lineup out, if we got like all that type of stuff, we're still figuring it out, but starting to figure out who's going to step up, who's going to play hard, who who you can trust to get stops, who, who who you can come out of a timeout and run a set with, who can function off off a whiteboard out of a timeout, all that type of stuff. So we're figuring it out. we got less than three weeks to go to the first game. So obviously things are a little different, uh, you know, once the game hits, and then you got to kind of figure out who can do it under the game-like situations. But we're trying to put them in as many game-like situations as we can get right now. And I like where we're at. I think we've got some really good leadership. You know, it obviously helps with some guys that have played college basketball before, you know, a kid like Bruner and Rojas, who saw us practice all year and was with us and new stuff. He's coming along, along really well. And Keanu Ellis has played some college basketball before. Quentin Lee's been around with us, practiced with us all year. So even though we've only got four guys returning that played games, we still got pretty good, you know, pretty good chemistry experience, whatever, whatever it may be, all that type of stuff from guys that were in the program or have been in college basketball before. Over to Charlie Potter. Yeah, I want to ask you just kind of what you said just there, the, the chemistry with so many new faces. Have you just seen this group kind of gel with so many new guys in the court? We've been working out since June. You know, we had to one kind of week there, week plus whatever, around the 4th of July, where we kind of shut some workouts down due to COVID. Other than that, it's been we haven't had to have any full shutdowns, so we've been able to work kind of since the middle of July on outside of some time when we gave them off. So I, we've had a lot of time with the guys. I think them playing together as much as they have has helped the chemistry. Obviously, you know, we're getting to a point where we're sick of playing against each other and we'd like to play somebody else, but I think we've had a lot of time to develop some chemistry and play different guys with different guys all the time in practice and we switch it up. So. I, you know, I like where that's at. I think the new guys are meshing well with the returners. You know, you know, I think Reese is a lot better with his hip after his hip surgery. He's gotten a lot healthier. And so, you know, even putting him and Bruner together some, I think they got some good chemistry. They pass well. Rojas has played well with either Reese or Bruner in there. Quinterly is figuring out, you know, how to play with the guards. Primo's starting to figure that out. He's a real smart, bright kid that's very talented and skilled. So, I like our group. Our depth's going to be a lot better. You know, if we can get through these next three weeks without any injuries, we should have really good depth going into game one. Jerry Tipton, go ahead. Nate, I wonder with uh, transfers and players testing water and all that, how fluid rosters are from season to season, just generally, and how does a coach deal with that? Yeah, I think you see the transfer – wire that gets bigger and bigger every year so it's, it's becoming more and more where you're coaching your team for that one year and then figure it out after that year now I think it's better when you have you know guys returning which you know we didn't have a ton of returners only four of them playing but if you look I mean it's not that it's really not that low of a number compared to what a lot of people have just based on what you said with transfers and everything so when you add in the fact that there's four returning guys that played in games, but then Rojas and JQ have both, you know, been with us in the program and Juwan's coming. Juwan's able to do some half court stuff. He still hasn't been able to do any up and down live stuff with us. So he, he you know, I'd, my doubts are Juwan will be cleared by game one, but, you know, we, we've got guys that have been in the program and played and I think there's some chemistry, but I think as a coach, you got to get used to, coaching a lot of new guys every year. I mean, I just, the reality of it. I, now, transfer has been getting more and more and more. If you go look at uh, what we had at Buffalo, we didn't lose any players that were heavy in the rotation uh, outside of once there. There was only one. So I think we did a good job building the culture where guys wanted to stay and be a part of it. We'd like to do the same thing here. The guys that we want to stay and be a part of what we're building in the future, we want to, you know, 
make it clear that they're getting better in our program and it's the best thing for them. We'd like for like to keep that to kind of keep the uh, chemistry going in the program. But, you know, the reality of it is you're probably going to have a few transfers every year, both coming and going and you're going to have to get some new guys every year and you're going to have to be able to coach that way. Alder Almo, you're up. Hi, Coach Nate. Thanks for doing this. Uh, Coach, I'm from New York. So there's a big news last week about the FaceTime call you had with uh, Tibbs and the other New York Knicks executive. I just want to follow up on that. On Can you walk us through what, what have been, uh, how inquisitive was the Knicks team? Listen, on I, I think it was more one of the deals where, you know, I've known those guys a little bit. I, you know, they, they hired uh, Wes there and Scott Perry was with the Pistons and I used to go up to watch Pistons uh, practices when I was a high school coach there. So I knew them. They made the connection with Kyra when they were interviewing him. So they just FaceTime me to kind of somebody that both of us knew, you know, I coached Kyra for a year. Kyra's a great kid. They've got a great staff there with New York. No idea where that's going. I'm sure they're going around interviewing all kinds of people uh, leading into the draft. So I, I don't, you know, I don't want people to take too much out of it. They, it's kind of a common connection. I coached Kyra and I knew those guys from my time in Detroit. They're, they're good guys and I think they wanted to make Kyra feel a little, a little more welcome, you know, a little more. So we, we chopped it up, choked around a little bit, talked about Kyra's game with them for a minute. And then I got off. It wasn't a very long uh, FaceTime call. It was more a just a quick intro, letting them know that they knew who I was. And, but I, yeah, I think Kyra is going to, uh, I know the Knicks uh, getting a lot of uh, media attention there in <laughs> New York, and they got they got a high draft pick. They got they got to make sure they get the right pick. I think Scott Perry is going to be really good for them. Obviously, Thibs is going to get the defense squared up there, and you know I think Kyra's defense got better as the year went on. We kind of talked about that, and I think I think Kyra's a really talented kid. I think with the way the NBA's played now, with how spread out, wide open it is, and you can't put your hands on people defensively, you know, like, so with, with him having the speed he's got and the skill level he's got, he can get in the paint whenever he wants, make plays. So he was great in our system. You know, we play a lot more wide open, like, uh, like the NBA is playing. I think he's going to be a really, really good NBA player. So be interesting to see where he fall, falls in the draft. I, I'd love to see him go to New York. I think, you know, I think he'd be great there. I'd shoot. I'd like to come to New York and I watch a few games. So he'd give me a good reason to come up to New York and watch some games and our season's over. Thank you, coach. Yep. Tony Sakalis, you're up. Nate, you've mentioned uh, Keon Ellis as like an ideal fit for your system. Uh, just what does he offer to your team? And then also, when did he really come up on your radar when you, when you first started seeing him? Well, we took a kid from his uh, junior college team up in Buffalo. So we, we knew the, the, the coach does a really good job there. They, they, they were number one in the country the bulk of the year. Uh, Coach Hodgson's all over the junior college, uh, you know, ranks. He he, know, he knows who's good, who's not. So, you know, as as it came up and we were trying to get more guards and less bigs and more multidimensional guys that could play multiple positions and play two ways, you know, we think his length, athleticism, and effort on the defensive end, that, that was his biggest selling point to us is his offensive game. His offensive game is great. I mean, he's – leading scorer on the number one Juco team in the country. So he makes makes threes at a high clip. He can drive the ball. He, he can finish. He's skilled. You know, he, him and Petty are similar size, 6'5 and long. And Petty's been playing unbelievable defense here. We're trying to sell the two of those guys on being two of the better two-way, two-way players in the SEC. And I think they're both capable of doing that. We're going to go over to Cecil. Let me guess. We don't see Cecil's face today. I haven't seen it yet on the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm you can the at least you can show team. us the cats, Cecil. Maybe. I'm, nah, you don't want to see them either. I'm oh, okay. Zoom, so. um, I've got two real quick. First, we hadn't had a chance really to talk to you since Alex had his surgery, and just wondered how it went and and what his status is. Right. I mean, I'm sure right now he's he's can't do anything, but um, what the prognosis is for him. So yeah, he had his checkup yesterday with the surgeon, uh, Dr. Waldrop. They, uh, everything looks good. Surgery went well. Stitches look good. They're uh, 
starting to get him in the weight room now with some limited stuff. Uh, you know, we're going to try to put a lot of weight on him here while he sits out this year. That's a big goal of ours. So we would like him. You know, he's obviously skilled for his size. He was a little long and thin. If we can get him bulked up, you know, 6'11", close to 245, maybe at 240, 245 in that range, like we're going to try. I mean, he's, you know, it's hard to gain weight when you're practicing every day and playing in games and start exerting that amount of energy cardiovascular wise. Like now that he's unable to do that, I think it's a great time to put the weight on. So they cleared him to start doing some uh, lifting in the weight room. Obviously he's not going to be able to do much lower body stuff, but we're going to get on with that. He's super engaged in practice. You know, they, they had him on crutches to start. He, he couldn't figure it six eleven on crutches. He couldn't figure him out that great. So they got him one of those scooters. So he's buzzing all over in uh practice on his little uh scooter with his with his leg up in the air. But he uh I mean he's great. He's talking, his energy's good. We want to make sure we keep him engaged the whole time. He's he, he told me he's go, he's trying to go through and watch every one of our games last year. You know, we've got a uh, a huddle log in that he's got. So he's been watching. He was talking to me yesterday in practice about a game that he had uh he was watching, I think he was up to the Mississippi State game uh, at our place last year. So he, he's trying to learn everything he can about our system, be engaged in practice, and looks like the surgery went well. Now he's going to start recovery here, uh, you know, as soon as he can. And um, I know you can't talk specifics. That's not what I'm asking. Just a general idea with signing day coming up next week on um, whether you're still recruiting one, two, three guys. Uh, looking towards the early signing period or, or whether it'll be the three commitments or whether you know? Yeah, so we're we're still recruiting uh, some new – you know, we've obviously got three guys that have given verbals that I can't really talk about, but you guys are all aware of. So we're expecting uh, those guys to sign, and then we're still recruiting other guys. You know, we've got some that we've been heavily involved with for a long time now that we're recruiting. I don't know if they'll commit before signing day, if they'll let it go longer. You know, they, they've changed the – the rules on everything obviously we can't get out and then mm -hmm. you know we thought we'd be able to get out to see sign guys now they just changed that to where to where they're not so outside of a guy just wanting to be done with the recruiting process you know that the signing doesn't give a, a ton of extra advantages so whether they go early late sign what, whatever it is we're, we're going to keep recruiting them as hard as we can we've added a few guys you know in 2021 class to our recruiting board you know we're working on getting zoom set up and that so we're we're still going after it we're still planning on signing five we'll see uh see if that changes we'll you know plan on signing three for sure early and then if we get too late or you know stuff to obviously changes we signed one early last year and ended up signing five late so i doubt it's going to be that many additional late this year uh, i hope not but you know who knows what happens thank you coach Thank you, Cecil. And we'll go over to Joe Goodman. Jeff's brother. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Nate, what are you, um, what are you most impressed so far uh, about Bruner right now, off the court, on the court? Uh, his, well, I'll, I'll give you one of each. So off the court is got a real high IQ, and I think he's got, good leadership skills where he speaks up. I think him coming in has really helped, you know, Petty and Herb have been here. They've tried to step up as leaders on the team. I think he's helped those guys in that regard. You know, he, he speaks up and it kind of gives them, you know, that, that now they can speak up. They, they're multiple guys speaking up. So I think he's a really good leader, high IQ guy, knows what we're trying to get done off the floor. On the floor, I think his passing abilities – at another level, I think he, he can really make guys around him really good. I mean, he's, and then he's shooting it way better than I knew. I think he shot 32% at Yale, somewhat like low 30s, if I remember correctly. He's one of the best shooters on the team right now. I and mean, when he gets his feet set, he's, he's not missing very many shots. So, you know, when you put him and Reese both two bigs at 6'9", 6'10", whatever they are, they can both make threes at the level they, they – can it, it makes it a lot harder for the defense to come out and cover that and as a follow-up how did you celebrate uh when you got the commitment from him shoot <laughs> we, we put a lot of work into that one that was all uh zooms facetimes phone calls i mean we that that was the one we went after 
really hard just because we, we, we really needed to get – and with the way we want to play, you know, we felt like we had – Kyra played great in our system. JQ was here sitting out. We knew he was going to be really good. We had wings and guards coming back. Shaq, Herb, you know, hopefully we got Petty, Ken Ellis. You know, we were on some different guys like that. But we we really felt like we got to get a big – and that's that's the difference in our system. Well, there's multiple differences. But one of the biggest ones is you got to have a big that can play on the perimeter that can really play. And we just felt like he was the best one out there. So, for what we needed – we felt like he was the best grad transfer on the market, and we went and got him. So I'm not going to say I don't do a whole lot of huge celebrating, but, shoot, we were surely excited about it. That's for sure. No no big parties that, that we're going to tell you about. Maybe the rest of the staff threw some parties, and I, I had a good meal at the house. But I don't know. Brian, Brian and Petway might have thrown a big party. We have time for a few more. We'll go over to William Galloway. Hey, Coach, the non-conference schedule officially came out yesterday, and obviously we knew a lot of that beforehand. Um, but what can you say about that in terms of trying to schedule uh, with everything that's gone on this offseason? And is there a particular game uh, or matchup with a team you're really looking forward to? Yeah, so that non-conference schedule kind of shaked out real similar. We didn't add any new teams from what originally there was some stuff that had been leaked. We just kind of eliminated – some off early in the schedule. And then one, you know, we were going to open with Jacksonville State. We just slid them down into the opener two weeks later. So, I like, I'm excited about it. I mean, we – shoot, it's not easy, that's for sure. I, uh, you know, if you look at it, we got to play the, the Maui. You know, you're going to get three possible high major teams there. Jacksonville State's one of the best – I mean, he does a great job coach. We played them at uh, Buffalo, scrimmaged them here last year. Year before I got here, they beat Alabama in one of the close scrimmage. So that's going to be a tough game to open. Maui's obviously got a great field. You know, Stanford's really good, got a lot of talent, one of the better teams in the Pac-12. And then, you know, possibility of playing North Carolina, UNLV, and then whoever in the third game. But then the Houston game's huge. All right, they're, you know, Kelvin Sampson's one of the better coaches in the country. Kids play hard, give great effort. I like the series when we signed it because I – we want to develop toughness. They're going to be one of the toughest teams in the country every year. I want to play those type of teams to expose us if we're not as tough as we need to be. So excited about that one. The Clemson one in Atlanta, you know, playing an ACC team, non-conference, going to be good. And then, you know, Furman, I mean, shoot, Furman almost beat Auburn at Auburn last year. They, they gave us a good game here. That They're another well-coached mid-major team. So even the mid-major teams that we've got, East Tennessee State, so, you know, one of the better mid-major uh, programs in the country. There's no, there's not one easy game on the schedule, which is good. I mean, if they reduce your schedule by four games, like let's make sure they're all quality games that are going to make us better and get us ready for SEC play. We'll do final question back over to Alder Almo. Hi, Coach. Uh, just going back to Kyra, Coach. Are there any teams that uh, reached out to you about him and made their due diligence? Oh, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I, I got the end of it. What was the big first part of the question? Coach, I was asking if there are other NBA teams aside from Knicks who reach oh, out to you. Yeah, I think we've uh, honestly, like, from the start of it, from the end of our season until now, I think every NBA team, I mean, if it's not every, it's all but like two or three. I mean, just about all of them have reached out to do their due diligence on it. I think uh, lately, you know, if you're hearing from them lately, those are the ones more interested. I think, you know, it's getting sorted out. I think those teams at the uh, – I mean, you do a pretty good idea. Those teams kind of middle to the end of the lottery, like mid-lottery to mid-first round, kind of everybody in that range is reaching out, doing their homework. Then there's a few others that may be looking to make trades that, you know, I mean, team with the number one pick reached out to us. I don't don't think he's going number one in the draft, but, you know, who knows. They I think – some teams that are doing their homework with the possibility of maybe there being trades that's come up are still reaching out. We're still getting a decent amount reaching out, but most of them have done their homework. Most of them know who he is. I mean, he's got zero red flags as a kid. He's a great person off the floor. He works hard. He's in the gym. Like that all that's the type of stuff they, they, they can see how good he is on film. They want to know what he's like off the court. And shoot, some of them give you some really detailed questionnaires, like a lot of, interesting questions. I told one of these guys, like, shoot, I need 
need you to send me that questionnaire for me to ask the recruits when I, uh, when I, when we ask, uh, when we recruit kids to come here, like it, it's a lot of interesting questions. So a lot of teams have reached out to us, almost the entire league, to be honest with you. Thank you, coach. All right. Thanks. We'll finish up today Appreciate with Javon Quinterly.